Good morning. Thank you for joining us. We just uh, finished a Zoom call, some of us, before the service, our Zoom time fellowship, and now we're gathered together as a whole congregation. Thank you for joining us today for this. And so that you're not just getting my volume as a house sound, you get it directly. But it's good to gather as a church. This is when we do we realize that the church is not a building. The church is a people. And we can still gather together in this manner today as well. In the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, 19th verse, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it, is, now it, it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am uh, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is doing a new thing amongst us. And it's good to join together so that we can worship Him and expect new things today. Don't just come to a service and say, well, it's going to be the same thing over and over again. But expect new things today. So as we come to worship, let's expect new things from Him. Please join your hearts with divine prayer. <clears throat> Father, in the same way that we anticipated Christmas coming, and for that first Christmas when they anticipated Jesus coming for the first time, may we today as well anticipate something new from you, something that you are doing, a new thing. Would you do a new thing amongst us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, I invite you to sing wherever you are uh, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And uh, yeah, just look at what's in your mind.
talk about bringing you an offering of praise. We, yeah, when we look at circumstances around us, especially during this past year, we can easily fall into the, the uh, I'll put it, the human trap of saying there's, there's not much to praise you for. There's been a lot of negative things happen. But Father, you have indeed given us reason to give praise to you, not the least of which is for your son, Jesus Christ. But Father, you've given us praise because you have been with us during this time. You have guided us during this time. You have given us provision in this time. Uh, we can see how you have helped in this time. Father, there are uh, those in our midst that need a touch. Uh, there are some who, who have been afflicted by the virus and we, we, in whatever way it would be, whether they've been, become sick with it or whether they've uh, had lost loved ones over it or whether they've uh, lost jobs or whatever it is. There's so many different ways it could affect, affect people, Father. Uh, I would ask that you would be their provision, that you would be their peace in that. And Father, we, we pray now for, for even uh, as we pray and remember the Hobbs family and the Thompson family who have recently experienced a uh, loss in their families. And Father, we, we, we pray that you would touch them. Father, be their comfort, each and every one of the family members and the loved ones, that you would uh, be, be with them, Father, and let them know that you are indeed with them. We pray this in the precious name of Christ. Amen. A number of weeks ago, I highlighted for us that when Moses had led Israel out of captivity, in the Israelites out of captivity in Egypt and brought them to the edge of the promised land and said that jo Joshua would be, would be taking them in there, they were 12 tribes or 12 clans of people. And as they went in, they were one nation of 12 clans or 12 tribes. But after a period of time, they, they had some divisions amongst themselves and they, turned, they became two nations, Israel and Judah. And ten tribes were in Israel, and, and uh, two tribes were left in Judah. And after a period of time, Israel allied itself with some of his, its neighbors and decided it was going to attack Judah and Jerusalem in particular. And the, the king of, of Judah at that time was a man by the name of King Ahaz, and he became understandably concerned. But to, to meet, meet his concerns, God sent the prophet Isaiah to him. And Isaiah said that to... to um, to Ahaz, he says, God's going to give you provision, uh, provision sorry, for this. You're not going to be destroyed. You're not going to be taken over. God's going to give you that provision. But what you need to do, what, what you're, God has asked you to do, he's, to, he's to, told me to tell you, is you need to ask him for a sign. Well, Ahaz then uh, said, well, I'm not going to ask God for a sign. I think that's testing God, and I shouldn't do that. But then Isaiah said to him, well, God's going to give you a sign anyway. And here's the sign that God gave him. We find it in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself said he will give you a sign. And this is the sign. The virgin will, be, will conceive and give birth to a son and will call, and, and will call him Emmanuel. So the virgin is going to give birth to her son and the virgin is going to call him Emmanuel. Does that verse sound familiar? Well, of course it does to us because that was the very verse that came to Mary when... Uh, she, she found herself pregnant with Jesus and Mary to, was to declare that, that Jesus was going to be called Emmanuel. And we see the verse repeated again in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 where it says, the virgin will, be, will conceive and, be, and give birth, birth to a son and we'll call him Emmanuel. And then the Matthew passage, different than the Isaiah passage, adds this extra little bit which says, which means God with us. In other words, Emmanuel means God with us to do this. That extra portion that, that, that was there for that. When Moses was telling the people that as he brought them to the promised land, the edge of the promised land, and that he would not be bringing them in, but Joshua would be bringing them in, he shared with them and he says, do not be terrified because, be, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified of, of your enemies because of them. For, their, for the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, we saw earlier where Isaiah had promised uh, that God, the Savior would be known as God with you. And when Moses was taking the people to the edge of the promised land and they were going to go in and not with him, and they became concerned about it, he was saying to them, God will go with you. God will be with you. And a repeat of Emmanuel, God with us. Never will he leave us and never will he forsake us. So what I'm going to do this morning is going to highlight some, some aspects or some, some, uh, so, some ways, some, some various aspects of how God is with us. And what I would like to do is for 
as we leave chapter, as we leave uh, the year of 2020 and enter into the year of 2021, uh, some of us might say good riddance to 2020. Uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Uh, it's about time we were done with that. Uh, but as we enter into 2021, what I want us to do is to focus for a few moments, moments of how in 2021 can we practice the presence of God. God is with you. God will never leave you and forsake you. How can we practice the presence of of God throughout the coming year and even beyond that. <clears throat> well, the first aspect of this that I would like to look at is God is with us in person. God is with us in person. In the New Testament book of John, the first chapter, the first verse and the 14th verse says this, <clears throat> in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The, when it's referring to the word there, it's referring to Jesus himself. We have just celebrated the coming of Jesus with, with Christmas coming. The Advent season led us up to Christmas Day, and we celebrated the coming of Jesus w with that. Uh, Jesus is very God himself, a part of the Trinity of God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is very God himself. God came to dwell amongst us with Jesus. But then somewhere around 30 years after Jesus was born, he, he was crucified and he died. He got put into that tomb. And, but he rose again and he ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, as we see the scripture tell us. <clears throat> but it doesn't end there, because he promised that he was going to return. As Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised that he would indeed return. But how can he return to us if he's dead? Well, the simple thing is, as I said, he rose from that tomb. He's not dead. He's alive today, and he's preparing a place for each of us. And so how do we prepare for him to come again? How do we be ready, ready for him to come again? How do we live with his presence now? Well, I'm going to suggest to us that, as I've, I've put it other times, it's as simple as A, B, C. A is that we acknowledge. We acknowledge that we are sinners. The Bible tells us, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. So we're all sinners. We need to acknowledge we're sinners and realize that the wages of sin is death for that. We need to believe, the B, A, B, believe. We need to believe that Jesus is indeed the payment for our sin. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it tells us that, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died as a payment for each and every one of us. And then we need to see, confess, acknowledge, believe, and confess. Confess our sins and take Jesus Christ as Lord. First John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us and or purify us from all unrighteousness. And Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your, mouth that you're, with your heart that you believe and are, are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And we can have assurance of that, that as we come and we acknowledge and we believe and confess, we can have assurance that God receives us as his, that God accepts our, our, our confession to him. Because as Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So how do we live in the presence of Jesus as we wait, wait for his return? We come and we confess our sins before him. We come and we... We, we believe in him. We come and we confess that he is indeed, confess the sins and believe that Jesus is, is the Lord. Well, the second aspect that we have here that I want to highlight for us is to consider God's creation. God is with us in his creation. God is with us in his creation. Uh, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Knowing God through his creation does not save us. But knowing God through his creation gives us a glimpse of who he is. And he is his, his eternal power and his divine nature, as it tells us in those verses. Because it says there, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature have been seen. When we see creation, we see God's eter eternal power and his, his divine nature. 
What we need to do is remember when we look at creation and we see God in creation is not to look at creation and just enjoy the beauty of creation. It's wonderful to look at a beautiful flower, say, and say that's a beautiful flower. But what God wants us to do is come from there and look at it and say, who created that flower? What a master artist has created this flower. Instead of worshiping the creation or getting enthralled so much with the creation, get enthralled with the creator, the creator himself, God. As we see there, we, we, when we see something of beauty, we should be enthralled with the Creator, with the Creator. Well, the third aspect that I want to highlight for us today about God with us is that God is with us through His Word, the Bible. God is with us through His Word, the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Would you like God to speak to you? Would you like to hear from God? Well, I would suggest to us he has, he has through his word. He has spoken to us through his word, and we need to bring ourselves to, to his word to, to hear from him and, and, and to, to know him. The word is the revelation of God. The word is, reveals ourself as well. As we come to the word, God reveals himself. We, we learn of God in his word. He reveals himself through his word. And as we read his word, as we spend time in his word, we, we, we draw close to him. But not only do we learn about God, we learn about ourselves. As, as that passage said to us, the word of God is a double sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It judges through the attitudes of the heart. It tells me that the word of God can be used in my life. The word of God can be applied in my life and used for me. Uh, to, to, to help me understand who I am even better than I can myself, that we come to the Word of God. If you don't regularly read the Bible, I would encourage you, why not for 2021, in the year 2021, why don't you, you take this opportunity to begin doing so, regularly reading the Bible? And as you do, I would give, give you these following guidelines. I, said, I would suggest that you do so in a way that, is, that, that works for you. Read the Word of God in a way that works for you. Uh, if you regularly read the Bible, you may want to change up the translation of the Bible you're using. Use a different translation so that uh, you just he hear things a bit differently uh, to do that. Uh, last Chris Christmas Eve, a couple of days ago, uh, we read throughout the service, we read the, the, the traditional script, uh, Christmas story through the Bible. But I chose a translation that we don't normally use so that we could hear it differently again and hear it new and afresh. So uh, you may want to use a different translation. Uh, use a translation that you understand. Uh, some translations I even have tr trouble understanding because of the language they use in it. I'm, it's not language I was uh, raised on and, and, and uh, familiar with. But you may find uh, you, you use a translation that you're familiar with. Uh, find the best time of day that works for you. When is best time of day that's going to work for you? Uh, for myself, it's usually first thing in the morning. But I find myself coming to the Word of God. For, for, with others, it may not work that way. Uh, but find the best time for you so that you can spend some time in the Word of God and get to know God, get to know yourself. It's interesting that obviously in my position as a pastor, I spend uh, time in the Word of God, studying the Word of God. But it's interesting that what I've found in my own life is the most, uh, is the times that I often hear from God speaking to me personally are not in my times of study, are not in the times that I'm spending studying the Word in preparation for a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or something like that. It's in my personal times of reading. My personal times of reading that I'm just reading the, the Word and He speaks to me during that, either something about my own life or revealing something about Him. And it can be times in there of something I've read over and over again before, but all of a sudden I, I, I read at that time and it's a fresh, uh, it appears freshly to me, like almost as if I'd never heard it before. Well, the fourth aspect of God being with us is God is with us through his spirit. God is with us through his spirit. Jesus himself said, very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, the advocate was the Holy Spirit. The advocate will not come, but if I go, I will send him to you. So Jesus makes a promise here. He says, I'm going away, but the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. He says, the, the third person of the Trinity, he is going to come. And that, he says, I wouldn't have told you that if it wasn't true. But he's going to send him to us. Well, there's an account in John chapter 3 
where, where a man named Nicodemus, he, he came to Jesus and he said to him, how can someone be born when he is old? Because Jesus had been talking about being reborn again. He says, how can someone be born when he is old? Surely he, they cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb. So as Nicodemus heard this, he said, what are you talking about being born again? What are you talking about being uh, born a second time? He can't get into your mother's womb a second time. What do you mean by that? Well, it records for us in Matthew chapter 3, John chapter 3, where Jesus answered, he says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Each of us is spiritually dead without God. His Spirit comes and brings life to our spirit. And we are, as Jesus said here, we are born again to do that. When Jesus ascended into heaven to pre prepare a place for us, he left his Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who has been, who, who gives birth to our spirit. And this is what Jesus calls being born again. And we need to dwell with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells with us. That's why the Bible refers to us as a, as a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit individually and collectively as a church as well. Uh, we're, we're the Holy Spirit dwells with us. The Holy Spirit's job is, is multifaceted in our, in our lives. His role is multifaceted. Uh, he's a, he is to teach. He is to remind. He is to convict. He is reveals. He guides. He gifts. He intercedes. He san sanctifies. Um, he enables us. And all that we do. And that's just some of the things that the Holy Spirit does. I looked up a re list recently and said there's le at least 70 things that the Holy Spirit does to us. Well, we need to let him dwell within our lives so that the presence of God is with us. The presence of God dwells with us. God with you is what Jesus was saying. God with you. And God is still with us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the final aspect that I see here that I highlight for us today about uh, God being with us, that God is with us forever. God is with us forever. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, we read, For the Lord himself will co come down from heaven with a loud command, and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, call, call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, all who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord. And so we will be with the Lord forever. It concludes there. It says we will be with the Lord forever. 2020 has been a wacky year, if I can put it that way. It's been a, well, what's 2021 going to hold for us? Will the vaccine be the magic bullet like it was for, for polio? when the 2021 20, unfolds? Will we finally find a new normal or will we 2021 th keep throwing us curves like 2020 has done? Uh, will 2021 be the year that Jesus finally returns? Who's going to be born this coming year? Who's going to pass away this coming year? Who's going to lose a job this coming year? Who's going to find that dream job this coming year? How long into 2021 will it take us to before we find out when, when school is going to settle down to some form of normalcy. How about visiting in, in, in uh, nursing homes, in retirement homes, in long-term care homes, in hospitals? When's that going to come down to some, time, some, some sort of form of new normal that we have? These questions could go on and on, and I'm sure you could add all of your questions into that of what we have. But I have an answer for all those questions. When's all this going to happen? Well, how's it going to happen? My answer is, I don't know. It comes as simple as that. We don't, we, don't know. we don't know when it comes to do that. And it could come down to, to this, except for one thing. One thing I do know, that God is with us forever. God is with us forever. As we, we go through this past, I've gone through this past year, God has been with us. As we go through 2021, God will be with us until Christ shall come again, and then we will be fully with him. So my encouragement to this is, as we go into 2021, that you practice the presence of God. Live in his presence. Live in his presence through Jesus. 
live in his presence through creation, live in his presence through the Bible, live in his presence through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit within you, live in his presence forever. Let's practice the presence of God. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. <clears throat> Father, thank you for that promise that was given in the Old Testament days when you said my, you would never leave us or forsake us, and then repeated in the New Testament. Thank you that you are with us. You are with us in Jesus. You are with us through the Holy Spirit. You reveal yourself through your, through, through your word. You reveal yourself through your creation. Father, you are with us forever. May we take this time when we, when, when, at the end of the year, when we reflect, the end of the year and the beginning of the new year, when we look forward to the future and what it has there, that in all we are uncertain about for the future, Father, in all that we uh, don't know about the future, we do know this. You are there for us. You hold us, Father, and you desire us to be with you. So, Father, we, we come into this new year determining to spend time with you, determining to acknowledge your presence in our midst, determining, Father, to live after you, not to be caught up so much in the, the events of the world, that though they happen, we come to you, Father, knowing that you are in control of all and we are with you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
time to fall on the surface right now, so you can go to uh, Brandon's Facebook page, and the connection to that that Zoom fellowship is there. But receive this gift from the Word of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, and give, and give you and trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thank you.